protesters marching in support of George Floyd and in opposition to what they perceive as police injustice. The 46-year-old black man died after police arrested him on Monday night. Floyd's death is making news all around the country and around the world. Really, Christian Cordero live at the scene in South Minneapolis with CBS News correspondent Jeff Pegues. Good morning, Christian. Jason, good morning. Yeah, I wanted to bring Jeff in here for a little bit of perspective because this is something that has moved well past Minneapolis. So, Jeff, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Um, you've been here for almost a day now. What are some of the things that you've noticed on the national level, whether it's reaction from people or just being out here on the scene during the protest yesterday? You know, what, what really struck me when I arrived yesterday afternoon after flying from D.C. was the diversity in the crowd here. Uh, there were f people from all different backgrounds, mostly younger, it seemed to me. Uh, and I thought that was really interesting that you had this broad coalition of people galvanized behind this effort. You know, it happened right over there at this bus stop, and you had them packing this intersection and chanting the same thing. They want to see justice. You know, they've seen all the video. They believe they've seen enough. Uh, and they want these officers prosecuted. However, that's a tough thing to do. There, it's a tough thing to do in 2020 because we have this juxtaposition of things moving so quickly on social media and yet they're being due process well beyond that. This was one piece of a very challenging day in America yesterday when it comes to race. We saw Gail King get so emotional after this story and that of Christian Cooper in Central Park. How does this fit in? Now, 24 hours, less than 24 hours later, all four of the officers have been fired from their job. The woman in that Central Park video has been far, fired from her job. Where is that balance between social media and the bigger picture? Well, it's, it's really the videotape. You know, you, you can't argue with the facts that you see on a tape there. And, you know, I've done a lot of research. I've written a book about this issue, police community relations. And what we found is that throughout history, there have been people in the black community complaining about excessive police tactics. But in many of those cases, no one listened, no one cared. But post Ferguson, Michael Brown, Things changed. Why? Because there is the videotape that people are seeing. And what we've seen nationally in covering these stories is that's really what makes a difference here is when there is cell phone video. People can see it with their own eyes. They don't have to hear about it from somebody else. They see it. And when they see it, that's when it really hits home. It sure does. In, in, the, in the tough ways and um, for, you know, for the people who want that, as you said, that justice and that peace. Um, it is, in some ways, their saving grace of something that they have to lean on. Jeff, thank you so much for joining us this My morning. Pleasure. Good luck today as you thank continue. You. You're reporting right here on 38th in Chicago in South Minneapolis. Jason, back to you.